What's mental health? He asks all the questions everybody wants to know. It basically, it includes our emotional, psychological, and social well-being. You're driving me half out of my mind, you crazy old coach. It affects how we think, feel, and act. Oh my god! <laughs> Not just that, mental health helps to determine how we handle stress, how we handle, <laughs> how we handle stress, and other things as humans. The Mind Clinic, a platform where people can talk about issues directly or indirectly on mental health. It's beautiful. Wednesday morning and at 8 o'clock, you know how we run it. It's the Mind Clinic. It's your boy here, LFZ, and I've got my co-pilot. We're flying together, taking you through everything that has to do with your mental health and how you process a lot of things, especially in these days and in this time. I've got Chinyere Ogo on the other end of the microphone this morning. Good morning. Morning. How are you doing? Very well. High spirit this wonderful Wednesday morning. I just want everything to go real fly and good. Honestly. Anyway, we have a very beautiful lady with us this morning, and she's a psychologist. She's going to be talking to us about practicing mindfulness. Wow. That sounds like a spiritual church camp thing, <laughs> but then it is not. <laughs> we'll, we'll figure out what it is. Anyway, we've got Valerie Igboke, right? Is that Igboke? Okay. <laughs> Valerie is a practicing psychologist at a private mirrors her private practice is based in abuja nigeria and she has about four four years working experience in mental health field and she's currently catering she's currently uh 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 it sounds like food something (laughs) (laughs) she's currently catering to groups and individuals dealing with uh existing uh, uh, why are you like existential, this? existential. Uh-huh. Crisis, um, oh grief, depression, anxiety, and the likes. Uh, Valerie also works with various organizations for employee wellness program in providing mental health support to staff. Valerie, you're welcome. Thank you. You have a very beautiful um, profile, I must say. I uh, don't mind me and Chino will go. Just, <laughs> right, that's, that's, that's how we roll. You're welcome to our club. Thank you. <laughs> it's good to have you this morning. You. All right. Uh, so, I mean, we're talking about practicing mindfulness. Uh, what is mindfulness? Okay. So, mindfulness is, in simple terms, it is deliberately paying attention to your mind, to your emotions, to your thoughts, to your body sensations, and how they interact with the world around us. Hmm. Um, it is simply being intentional and being aware, being conscious of all of these things, how they interact with um, your relationships with the world at large, in simple terms. Wow. Yes. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you want to say something? I, I, I'm just trying to be mindful. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> No, I mean, th- thank you for that. That's actually like a very good, um, that's a very good um, understanding of what mindfulness is. Because mm-hmm. can you imagine with and everything that is going on around us and all and all the crisis and the chaos and you know, the ability to pr- practice mindfulness at this moment, mm-hmm. um, being just being aware of everything that's going on around you, being aware of yourself mm-hmm. and your mind. Um, you know, this is one thing that we can't even take for granted. Yeah. When when can you say um, one should be able to practice mindfulness? When should we? Can we do it every time or are there particular times for it? I think it's very, very important. And I, I don't think there should be a set time um, or a specific time to say I'm practicing mindfulness. It's good to maybe set out time, but not necessarily say, oh, um, mindfulness is something I should do once a year mm-hmm. or once in three months. It's something that can be done any time, any day. Yeah. It's very, very important. Um, it would be good to practice it maybe first thing in the morning, before you go about your day, maybe before you go to bed, but it should be practiced all the time. And I think also in the society that we are in, we're, we're taught to be mindless, so mm-hmm. to speak. You know, you grow up, go to school, um, get a job, get married, do all the other things and just automation yeah. as opposed to really paying attention to what you're doing paying attention to how you feel about certain things paying attention to um how you speak so it's, it's something that should be practiced every time every day every minute every second does one even get perfect in these things 
that's why it's called practicing. Okay. Right? It takes time. It takes effort. I think some people would probably think, okay, I'm going to start practicing mindfulness now. Tomorrow, I'm great at it. No. You have to take your time. It's, it, it's a conscious effort. Mm -hmm. You have to take your time in doing it. And when you look at the research that is out there, you find that the, the people who have seen results out of mindfulness are people who have practiced for six to eight weeks. Wow. Three months, six months, and then they're beginning to see the results of it. So it's called practicing mindfulness for a reason. You have to be consistent and you have to practice to be perfect. Wow. Yeah. So you have to practice to pay attention. Mm -hmm. You have to practice paying attention. Mm -hmm. And in paying attention, like you can pick up a lot of things that are going on, especially with yourself mm -hmm. and the way you interact with the society. Yeah. Um, are there different types of mindfulness or, you know, what, what are the different types, if there are? Um, so, yeah, there are so many out there, but I'll mm. just mention a few. Um, we have um, walking, it's called like walking mindfulness. This is where as you're walking, as you're, say, five, ten minutes, you take a walk around your estate, around your area. And you're paying attention to your bodily sensation from your feet up. You're paying attention to how your body feels as you're moving. That is a type of mindfulness. Another one um, is it's like five, paying attention to your five senses, mm. where you pay attention to your breath, you pay attention to the things you can smell, the mm. things you can see, the things you can hear, the things you can taste. What does that do? It keeps you grounded, especially for people who now more than ever are going through um, experiencing anxiety, experiencing panic um, with the trauma that, you know, we all experienced two weeks ago due to the Lekki massacre. It's, it's important now more than ever to pay attention to your internal senses or your internal world, so mm -hmm. to speak. Um, so mindful walking, um, paying attention to your senses, these are two different types of um, mindfulness exercise or practice. Yeah. Okay, so it's, it's, it's not just yeah. um, um, taking a walk. Mm -hmm. You have to also take cognizance of what's happening. Yes, How exactly. does my feet feel? Exactly. Why? Interesting. Exactly. Wow. Um, I wanted to ask, you mentioned you talked about um, people and other people that would benefit from it. I wanted to know, are there specific people that benefit from mindfulness or is it something that everybody can do? Every single person. And not just adults as well, kids as well. Every single person can benefit from mindfulness. What are some of the benefits? Um, you become more, what's the word? Um, I'm the word now. You're able to pay more attention. You're able to focus more, concentrate. That's the word. Mm. You're able to concentrate better. For students, for example, you're able to concentrate on you have to study for exams. There's the anxiety of, oh my goodness, I'm going to fail. My mm. goodness, what questions mm. are coming? You're able mm. to just focus and really take in what you're studying. Yeah. Um, your, your physical health um, increases. There's research that your white blood cells is able to fight the disease in your body when you practice mindfulness more often. Your mental well-being in general increases. Um, just, there's so many benefits to it. So it's not just a particular set of people. It's from your kids to you as an adult, you as an elderly person, every single person is able to benefit from practicing mindfulness. Yeah. yeah. And you know, one of the biggest things, I'm glad that you even talked about the fact that we go in this automated drive and we don't stop to pay attention, we don't concentrate. And for me, in the conversation that we've been saying, the key words have been, you know, there has to be a conscious effort at practicing mm -hmm. it. You mm -hmm. have to be consistent with it for mm -hmm. you to see the benefit mm -hmm. and that it helps you with concentration mm -hmm. and awareness. Yeah. Not just awareness of yourself and the way your body is responding, mm -hmm. also awareness about the environment mm -hmm. and what's going on because a lot of the times we don't, we really don't pay attention. We just go with the flow. We don't. Yeah, you know. hmm. And for so many, so many people, when especially when you experience things like stress, and or, or any any mental health challenge, for example, we don't we be like, ah, no one can see it, I'm fine, yeah. I can keep going, and then we just keep going, yeah. and we don't know that down the road, it's going to actually come back to affect or us. Or you hear things physically. like, I I'm building stamina. Yeah. <laughs> I'm building stamina to withstand pressure <laughs> and stress. Yeah, th those things are not always very helpful. If When you feel anything in your body or when you when you are aware of anything that is going on, you actually be able to preempt 
you know, what possible direction maybe your health can take or the environment. You're able to sit back and just make a, a, a you know, a decision that has been thought through mm. be- before you act out. And that's one thing that, that's one good thing about mindfulness. Um, I, another thing I wanted to add, actually, just based on what you were saying, is it also helps you... Um, regulate your emotions yeah. in terms of just helping with any mental health difficulties it helps you reg- regulate your emotions and that it in turn helps you not just become not just go through the motion of i'm angry and feeling sad and feeling anxious but really understand what it is that you're feeling the emotions that you're feeling and that also would help you um help you in your relationships yeah. because the more you're able to understand what you're feeling, the, the better you are, you're able to express what it is you're feeling yeah. and have people understand you um, as opposed to, you know, just putting up this wall or this mask of, I'm fine, I'm fine. And, you know, or maybe expressing anger when really there's just so, so much more um, emotions underneath that anger that you're unable to express. So it helps you regulate your emotions as well. Yeah. How, do, how do we get children to practice mindfulness? Um, I think the first thing would be communication from the parents. Um, I think as parents, we just feel, oh, they're kids, they don't understand anything, but it's really communicating with them, helping them understand. For example, if they're throwing a tantrum, don't just scream at them and say, go in the naughty corner. Mm. It's helping them understand what are you feeling right now? Are you angry? Are you sad? Are you happy? What is it? Are you upset about <laughs> something? Discuss mm. with your children like you Nigerian would with your... parents. Good morning. <laughs> Discuss just with left your the kids. Up, <laughs> I say, <laughs> you know, like you would with your friends. They they have feelings as well. They they have emotions. They understand you when you speak, especially as as a mother, as a father. They really listen to you. They really pay attention more than adults. In fact, I think wow. at that early stage. Kids are just, they pick up every single thing. So it's important to really communicate with them and help them understand as kids what it is they're feeling because they will grow up as adults to be able to become more mindful, to be able to um, communicate better um, as an adult. So as parents out there, Nigerian parents, (laughs) as he said, please learn to communicate with your kids. All right. Hmm. Uh, Parents, I don't know, because... Like a lot of times, I see parents at malls, uh, stores, where they're like, "Don't go there. Get go and face the wall. Kneel down there. Mm-hmm. Go back to the car." Well, I, I, I mean, she just said it. Children also have feelings. They yeah. have feelings. So try to find out this morning. <laughs> but then, uh, let, let's talk about the possible challenges of being mindfulness or being uh, practicing. And this mindfulness, because uh, you know, just like Chi was saying, I mean, you've been saying conscious, conscious. So, like me now, I'm even thinking, I'm not even conscious, conscious enough to even know what is the five senses that is sensing around me. Say. Talk more yeah. of when I'm walking, you know. So, I mean, what are the possible challenges? It definitely, the kind of country we're in, everywhere is noisy. Yeah. There's mm. so many distractions. There's so there's just so much drama going on. The system alone is a distraction, Mm -hmm. you know. There's just so many things going on. So these are possible challenges to practicing mindfulness. The fact that you could be easily distracted. Maybe you have five kids at home. Kids are running everywhere. Maybe there's a family drama going on. You're unable to deal with it. Just in general, distraction. I think distraction is the main thing, um, the main challenge to your ability to practice mindfulness. So as if you know that you are someone who is very busy, you rarely get the time. Hence why I, I said earlier, even if it's the first thing you do in the morning, even if, even if it's the last thing you do at night, take out five minutes or 10 minutes to just practice this mindfulness. And you see that as time goes on, it becomes a part of you, it becomes a routine. You know that I can't do without practicing mindfulness. And you might see mindfulness as, like you said earlier, this spiritual, you know, mm. fancy thing. But even if you're a religious person, praying is a form of mindfulness. If you're intentional oh. about it, yeah. mm. you know, if you find that sometimes you're praying, your mind is going everywhere. But the moment you decide to focus, you know, that is you being mindful. You, you begin to realize the your worries, you begin to realize the things that make you happy, the things you want to thank God about, you know, that is you being mindful. Yeah. So distractions are there. There's always going to be chaos and disorder in the world. 
but it's your responsibility to take out that time to know when you want to be mindful. Just to also add to that, some of the, some of the distraction and the noise can actually be internal. Mm. You know, you know, like you mentioned, your brain and your mind wanders. You know, go somewhere, so you're thinking about what we're gonna have for lunch or the work that you have on your table that you have to do, mm. um, or maybe just something. It's not always external, so it's also important for us to pay attention to where our mind goes to, and that's why it has to be a conscious effort. That even when you are walking and you find yourself your thought is derailing, going somewhere else. It's okay to bring yourself back and not ask yourself, you know, why am I thinking about that? Why is that happening? And that also helps in the process um, that your challenge can actually be internal. You might even be in a very quiet place and you, you see your mind yeah, still. going, you know, different mm-hmm. places. So mm-hmm. that's why you have to practice being conscious of bringing yourself back to the present. Mm-hmm. Focus on now, here. Yeah. Yeah. What's going on in the present? Yeah. The way she, she is looking at my eyes is like, she, she can tell that this guy is even mindful. He's like, his mind is dancing everywhere. Are you sure? <laughs> exactly. I was, going to, I was going to ask that question. But it's all good. Do you want to know about mindfulness? Do you want to know how you could focus um, uh, with all the distraction around you, your area, your compound, your office, but you just want that time. You want to learn or you want to learn how to practice being mindful. Uh, you can call now. All right. She wanted to ask something. I wanted to? Ask something. I thought you wanted to. No, no, no. I wanted to also like talk about sometimes when we, when we speak about most of these things that have to do with mindfulness, um, you know, a lot of people find, oh, it's too religious or it's too, yeah. you know, it's, it's something that is so um, out there. Mm, let's take this one. Sorry. Okay, that's fine. Hello, good morning. Hello. Hello, good morning. Good morning. What's your name and where are you calling from? Good morning. Can you hear me? We can hear you loud and clear. Hello, good morning. In case you are hearing me, my name is Janna Yochuku. And then what I want to ask is, what is the, the, the difference between mindfulness and meditation? All right. We got that clearly. Thank you very much. And I, yeah, what is the difference between mindfulness and meditation? All right. You can say it's a bit the same. If they are not, what is the difference? Okay. Because meditation also involves concentration. Okay. In those spaces as, uh, as listed as by the facilitator. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. That's All right. Mm-hmm. Thank God Valerie is still here. <laughs> now ask me this question. I will play music. <laughs> You'll be the one to answer it. <laughs> Thank you very much for that question. It's a very good question. And mindfulness is a form of meditation. Okay. You are very right. Yes, mindfulness does um, require you to focus. Um, meditation does require you to focus as well. So mindfulness is a form of meditation. Yeah. Okay. One of the same. Is a form of meditation. Yes. yes. All right. Okay. So I lost my train of thought. <laughs> 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 you need to be mindful. Okay. Okay. So I thought we'll just do a little bit of a practice here in the studio mm-hmm. and then also get the people if you're listening and you're not on your wheel, well, you can you can you drive. Can, you, can, yes. you can actually do it while you're while driving. You're driving. Um, yeah. So if you're listening, I'm going to hand over to Valerie to give us, like, just walk us through a little bit of a mindfulness exercise. Right. Okay. Okay. So if you remember when we're talking about the types of mindfulness exercises, I mentioned paying attention to your five senses. Mm-hmm. So this is something that would help keep your mind grounded, bring you grounded from maybe you're thinking far into the future, you're thinking too much into the past. We want you to be here now. Okay, so we start by paying attention to five things you can see, five things that are not triggering to you, five things that um, maybe bring you a sense of comfort. For example, I can see the color blue here in the studio. It reminds me of the blue skies and it's calming for me. So five things you can see wherever you are, just look for five things you can see and just note them in your mind. And I can then, see a building. <laughs> <laughs> how does that make you feel? It's not just yeah. about looking at the things. It's, it's how it makes me feel. Yes. Things that are calming for you. 
you know, associate it with something that makes you feel mm. good. Something that makes you feel good. Yeah, the, mic, the microphone makes me feel good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, and then the next one is four things you can hear. So it could be the sound of cars driving. It could be the sound of birds. If you're close to a beach, lucky you. It could be the sound of the waves. Just four things that are calming to your senses. It could be the sound of your baby. If you have a child next to you, maybe your baby laughing, your baby smiling, and that just brings you a lot of joy. That's fantastic. And then three things that you can smell. It could be the smell mm. of perfume. It could be the smell of... Your baby's powder it could be the smell of anything at all, and one thing that you can taste. Mm, yeah. It's always good to carry about maybe some sort of mint or sweet or lollipop, you know, for whenever. If, for example, you're going for an interview or you're going for something that is causing you any form of anxiety. The moment you practice all by the time you get to your taste you find that you're already here you're not thinking you're not all over the place you're here and you're now oh true i agree with the tasting there's this anxiety taste like when you yeah like when you're scared or when something is you, you're not so sure there's this taste that i don't know do you like, for me I, I think i have an idea for me it feels like my mouth goes dry when I'm anxious, right? So I like to, I didn't bring water. Like literally when I got here, I'm like, oh God, my water. My mouth goes dry. So I always like to carry water with me because I feel dehydrated whenever I'm anxious. So for some people, the moment you drink water, the moment you just put in something in your mouth, I feel like, you know, you start to feel calm. So yeah, mm. just engaging all of your senses is very important to bring you here and now. Right. How did that feel? I don't think he was here. <laughs> Were you mindful? I was really mindful. He tried. I, was really I saw mindful. him try a bit. I was really mindful. Okay. Anyway, Abuja, uh, let's get to hear from you. Um, I mean, let's talk about being mindful. And um, I mean, let's get to tell you how you can practice some of these things, especially because I'm, I'm thinking about those who even live in very populated areas. How, how will they get to do some of these things? Hello, good morning. Good morning. What's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Richard. I'm calling from Kubwa. All right. Richard, all the way from Kubwa. How is Kubwa this morning? Uh, fine, fine. I, I, about the marriage issue for with my wife, she called. And in fact, I'm heartbroken. Wow. So I, I want to reset my mind. What do I do? It's, it's hurting me. Oh, I my gosh. Okay, so two things will happen. Uh, I will allow Valerie to speak, and I also want you to listen to the show to the end of it. We'll drop a number. I need you to call that number. So, because I guess that there are some things she won't be able to tell you on air, uh, so that you can also call that number. And let's take it from there. But we do feel the way you feel at the moment, and we know you'll come out of this strong. Soon, very, very soon. Just, just stay with the dial. Very, very because, soon. Because, because I'm, I'm, I'm driving, I have to pull over to. Just in the next two, three minutes, you have it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, you want to respond? To yes. Um. Yeah. I, I really sympathize, empathize with you, um, Richie. And the one thing I would say with um what you've brought forth with to us is. 
to really understand what what exactly what are you feeling what exactly is going on with the issue right now um is this something that you can really sit down and communicate because if you were listening to the show i said earlier that Mindfulness helps you regulate your emotions. And the, the more you're able to understand what it is you're feeling, the better it is you're able to express to a friend, to a partner, to family, what you're feeling. So really sit down with yourself and ask yourself, what is this that I'm feeling? Sometimes you find out what you're feeling could be jealousy, maybe it's pride, maybe it's um, anger, maybe it's confusion. What is this? And then you break it down. Why are you feeling the way you're feeling? And communicate this to your partner. Try and understand from her perspective as well, right? Try and understand what it is that she's feeling and have a discussion about it. And like like he said, it's it might be good for you to um, seek therapy or seek couples counseling for you guys to work through whatever it is you're going through it might not be you know the surface value issue so you would want to seek counseling to help you work through but for now i think the one thing you can do or practice or exercise is to um try and understand what is beneath everything that you're feeling yeah. All right. yeah. um so I, I wouldn't add too much to it. I think it would be you will benefit from um, seeking therapy, yeah. um, both individual and also as a couple, mm-hmm. um, to try and understand what's going on mm-hmm. um, and try and find a way a way forward. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, you will benefit from that. Mm-hmm. So I'm just gonna drop the number in case mm-hmm. you're still listening, and I hope you're still listening. Mm-hmm. Um, the number to call for um, psychological support is zero seven zero six zero six two five zero. Five four. I'll repeat the number again. Zero seven zero six zero six two five zero five four. And please remember that this number is only for psychological support. We don't offer any other support. Um, and the number will take you directly to Neem Foundation. All right. Um, thank you very much, Neem Foundation, for putting up this initiative. It's been an amazing thirty minutes of my life basically. Thank you very much, Valerie, for also stopping by to also educate us on how to be mindful about a lot of things and uh, also channeling our strength and focus to the right things so that we can stay healthy and our mental health can just be on point. Thank you very much.